Hi, it's your host, Apun Bharatiya, and welcome to 2023 Predictions Series. And today we have with us Kit Parker, Chief Growth Officer at Noble Line. Kit, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Great to be back. Of course, I'm going to ask you to grab a crystal ball and share what predictions you have with us. But before we go there, quickly tell us how should we look at Noble Line in 2023? Noble Nine is a service level objective platform, SLO platform. And really what we're here to do is to help organizations figure out how to run their systems reliably so they don't uh, end up in the news for having downtime, but also to be efficient and productive so that they're not chasing all kinds of little problems, but can actually focus on things with customer impact. Um, we've been around since 2019 and we're uh, quickly growing and becoming uh, uh, more dominant in this uh, market and observability. We work with a number of existing uh, data sources and observability tools and uh, workflow automation tools. So we fit very nicely into um, anybody's workflow. Now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and tell us what predictions you have for us. Well, the first prediction that I have for uh, for this year is that the results of the tech layoffs that we've already seen will make it harder for companies to build and maintain DIY solutions. You know, having staff and extra people on the team to do 20% projects, things like that, that's been a luxury most companies have been able to do. That's not going to be the case going forward. And what I think that's going to lead to is more and more serious consideration of um, vendor solutions and open source solutions as organizations have to focus on their core competency. My next prediction is that the rising cost of observability will cause teams to really question what data to store. And one of the things we've, uh, we've seen in the past is companies try to you know, collect as much data as possible, um, use many different tools and solutions to understand what's going on in their production environment. But we also know that 99% of the time, or if not, if not higher than that, those services are actually running okay. And what ends up happening is people don't go back and look at that data, but they still pay to store it. And I think people are really starting to question um, the validity of this approach. And I think they're looking for more sophisticated answers that really drive the value of that data based on how it's used downstream and not just trying to collect as much data as possible. My third prediction is that outages will continue to make headlines, finally raising the priority of reliability. And I, uh, I'm sure whatever uh, outages I mentioned would already be out of date by the time you see this video. But you know, the, there's been a number of, uh, of issues that spans many different industries, whether it's transportation, uh, entertainment, retail, uh, we see these kinds of outages, you know, in the cloud, in, in um, messaging systems, in uh, uh, video streaming, right? We see these these impacting quite a few businesses. And um, if you're on the other side of that, you know, you really don't want to have that reputation. And managing reliability has been seen traditionally as a technology issue. Increasingly, it's being seen as a business issue and really a reputation issue. And so some of us have been advocating for reliability practices for a number of years. I think uh, business stakeholders are finally getting the message because they see the risks and the reality of what they have to do. And then my final prediction is that thriving companies will use smart and sophisticated metrics to drive cost cutting. And what I mean by this is oftentimes we feel a lot of pressure, especially these days, to cut costs. And it's easy to do that by just, you know, using the hatchet and cutting budgets uh, willy nilly and trying to be very aggressive in spending, uh, cutting spending so that teams will, will react. Uh, unfortunately, this can leave you in a position where you can't deliver what you promised to your customers. And what we, uh, what I believe is that people who can be more targeted, they can really think about the cost in the context of the delivery that they owe their customers, and they can be much more uh, using the scalpel than the, uh, the hacksaw, if you know what I mean, uh, are going to succeed through these times. These are very difficult times ahead of us for every, every industry. We, we see recessions looming. We see tech layoffs. We see a lot of problems in the market. Um, but that also creates opportunity. And the companies that don't panic and that have a steady hand and, uh, you know, do the simple thing of, you know, make more money than you spend uh, are going to build businesses that are going to be sustainable for the long term. So I, I'm actually I think this is a great, um, a great uh, filter for companies that can know how to, to manage their company properly. And I think they can use the right data to make those really bold decisions to run their business. So there, there are my predictions for 2023. But thanks for sharing your predictions. If I ask you, what is going to be the focus of uh, Noble Nine in 2023? Well, our big focus this year is helping customers uh, get onboarded and get adopted and making it easier to do SLOs. Um, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention SlowConf, which is coming up in May, and the uh, call for speakers is open now. Registration is free, and we've got some really exciting stuff going on there. Uh, so that's a, that's a major uh, focus for me personally uh, in our community. Um, but we've seen more and more customer traction, and that has meant for us is really scaling up to deliver uh, uh, for them. And uh, we've, we've put together some really cool new features. 
We launched a thing called Replay, which allows you to go back 30 days of the data. I may have mentioned it to you before. Um, we're also working on a new capability that will give you better recommendations for uh, for SLOs, which we showed off at uh, reInvent in, in Las Vegas, and it's going to be launching soon. We have some other goodies in store to make it easier to get started um, and give you starting point templates uh, for SLOs. We're continuing to invest in open SLO, our open standard for SLOs. We're investing in slow DLC, which is our slow development lifecycle, um, and building more and more strategic partnerships. So that's been really, I think, one of the big focuses for us is just kind of becoming more sophisticated in our our approach to reaching customers, helping them make good decisions about uh, how to get on board with SLOs. What are the challenges that you see are going to be there in 2023 and how Noble9 is going to help you know, customers kind of navigate through these challenges? So I think the biggest challenge that is facing pretty much everybody and you know, in our current environment is doing more with less. And you're asked as an enterprise or any kind of company to you know, stay innovative, keep up and running, and cut costs. Now, normally you'd get asked to do two out of three, right? That's uh, the old uh, the old joke. Now you're being asked to do three out of three: innovate, cut costs, and stay up and running. And where Noble Nine can help with this, and and really with our service level objective platform, it really is about balancing and using data to make really smart decisions about where to spend your time and attention. So you can filter out the noise of alerts that don't have customer impact. You can make data driven decisions about how to prioritize your innovation versus your you know technical debt or reliability work. Um, you can stay customer focused and you can also reduce the cost and confusion required to run uh, operations. And I think that combination of effects is why we're seeing even during as budgets are getting cut, people are still buying Noble Mind. They're still bringing SLOs into their environment because they see that it's adding a net positive, uh, even though, you know, it's not a, a zero cost uh, investment for them. It does drive these uh, savings for them and the, these, this better agility and, uh, and innovation. So that's that's kind of what I see coming, and I've I've seen this with you know a number of companies that are very happy with their decision to move forward with Noble Mind. Kit, thank you so much for taking time out today, and of course share these predictions, focus of the company, the challenges ahead. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show at the end of the year to not only get the next set of predictions, but also see how many of your predictions turn out to be true. Thank you. Thanks so much.